Hello everyone, this is Pakshta Fashion Workshop. I remind you that we post new videos every day. I removed the taking from the jacket, so now we can start cutting lining, facing and the other needed details. I don't need the pattern for the back, because I'm going to cut interfacing and lining using the cut details. I remind you that I made a pattern for this jacket on the basis of a pattern for dresses with dolman sleeves. I will use the front pattern to make facing and lining. I can move it aside now. Have a look at the front. What is different in it from the original pattern? It's double breasted, there is a collar stand in it, it's wider and shorter. The bottom is round. I didn't actually need to draw the new pattern. I could start working right on fabric. I did it for you to see everything clearly. I am happy that you like the design. I try to show you something new and interesting in each tutorial. You wrote a lot of positive comments about this jacket. I'm absolutely sure that the jacket would fit me perfectly. This is a piece of interfacing I'm going to use to double this jacket. It's very thin. The most important thing is that it doesn't stretch lengthwise. It can stretch crosswise a bit, but not lengthwise. This is very important. The lengthwise grain of the interfacing should match the lengthwise grain of the front detail. I will use a different kind of interfacing to double the facing. It's much stronger. It doesn't stretch neither crosswise nor lengthwise. Have a close look at it. As I've already said, it doesn't stretch at all. Next, let's have a look at the lining. This is a piece of fabric I'm going to make lining off. I want to insert this binding in between the lining and facing. I wasn't planning to do it, but I want to show you how to work with bindings. I've already showed you how to make them. Watch the video if you haven't done it yet. I think that I'll also show you how to attach fasteners today. I'm not sure about it yet. First I'll cut interfacing for the front and then for the back. People often ask me how much fabric they need to sew something. It depends just on the design and your own measurements. 1.2 meters, 1.3 meters, 1.4 meters, from 90 centimeters to 1.5 meters. I recommend making a pattern and laying it on a piece of fabric you have at home. This is the best way to find how much fabric you need. Don't be afraid of experiments. Due to the fact that there is a huge collar and white dolman sleeves in this jacket, I need more than two lengths of fabric to make this jacket. It doesn't mean that you need as much fabric as I do. It depends on your measurements, on the design, whether you are going to make a collar or not, whether you are going to make white sleeves or not, and so on. Make a pattern and calculate how much fabric you need. First, I'll double the jacket with interfacing. I remind you that the lengthwise grain of interfacing material should match the lengthwise grain of the cut details. I showed you the first fitting of the jacket. I want you to understand that the jacket will look absolutely different when it's doubled, stitched and ironed. I remind you that the jacket will be lined. When it's done, the collar and the button stand will be of a perfect shape. I remind you that we are working with cashmere fabric. Cashmere should always be cut pile side down. There are some fabrics which should be cut pile side up, but cashmere is not one of them. Cashmere should always be cut pile side down. The most important thing is that the direction of pile should match in the details. I cut both the front and the back pile side down. I'll also cut facing and all the other needed details pile side down. 
I remind you that when cutting the jacket, I signed the direction of pile in the patterns. I can move this detail aside. Next, I'll cut the interfacing for the back. When I do it, I'll cut the facing and lining. I showed you the two types of interfacing. They are absolutely different. The second type is suitable only for doubling facing and button stand. I can probably use it to double the bottom of the sleeves. Notice that I'm cutting the interfacing material right along the cut details. It is very important for you to use interfacing materials of a very high quality. Please, be very attentive. I put the first detail at the front on the ironing desk. And then put the cut piece of interfacing on its sticky side down. We have a more convenient ironing desk in my fashion house, but I want to show you what to do if you work on a regular one. Have a close look here. Here are the two front details. They are placed on the ironing desk face to face. Why did I do it? It's the only right way to iron cashmere. You could damage cashmere if you iron fabric any other way. You should always look for special techniques for ironing fabrics with pile. It's very important. Cashmere details should always be matched face to face for ironing. Always start ironing from the center of the detail and then move to the sides. Control the process very thoroughly. Make sure that you don't make any faults or air bubbles. Be very attentive, don't hurry, and don't press iron too hard, you could damage fabric. There is a tiny black thread here, I need to get rid of it. Be very accurate and attentive. Press the iron very slightly first, and then press it harder when you make sure that there are no faults on the interfacing. This is when you need to use all the force you have. It's much more convenient to work on the other ironing table. You've already seen it on some of my videos. Do not forget about the collar. It's also pretty convenient to work with the two layers at once, because it will be much easier to trim the details this way. I remind you that we always trim the two even details at the same time. It's very hard to make them match perfectly if you double them separately. I'm going to shoot some video courses for you. I will show you how to sew different garments very thoroughly, from choosing fabric to edging every small detail. Anyway, those who can't afford buying courses will be able to find a lot of useful information on my YouTube channel. I remind you that we post new videos every day. They are all free. I think that you're pretty lucky. The technique I'm showing you now is very useful. It's not hard to make such jackets or coats. You can see that once I make sure that I attach the interfacing perfectly, I press it much harder. That's it. Next I need to turn the details to the other side together and double the second detail. I need to do it absolutely the same way as I ironed the first detail. Don't hurry, be very attentive. What is also very convenient in my case is that the fabric is white. By ironing the details face to face, I avoid damaging fabric or somehow making it dirty. I remind you that you should start ironing from the center and then move to the sides. The front and the back details are ready. Have a look at the edges. I need to trim the details. 
I remind you that we should trim the two details at once. Otherwise, you won't be able to make them even. This is very important. If you trim the details separately, you won't be able to make them even. When I trim the back details, I'll move on to working with the front ones. The front details are ready. I trimmed them. They are pinned to each other face to face. I pinned them for them not to move. The front and the back details are ready. Everything is perfect. I'll move the details aside. I'll be working with the pattern first. This is the front pattern. I remind you that I just added some for the seams when cutting the details. I will use this pattern to cut lining and facing. I'm doing everything so thoroughly for you to see everything clearly. I need to measure and mark 5 cm here. I remind you that in double breasted items, facing should be at least 4 cm wider than the bottom stench. Next, I need to connect these points with a beautiful round line. It should go this way. This part is about 5 cm wide. You can make it as wide as you want. I recommend everyone watching videos on how to make button stands. In these videos, I show you everything very thoroughly. I tell you everything about the button stand extension. This is a very important technique. I'm making facing. It will be that wide because this is double breasted jacket. The jacket will be lined. Lining should be cut on a grain. I'll sign it. It is parallel to the center front. I don't need to mark the grain in facing because the center front already marks it. Now I can start cutting the pattern. I drew the facing this way. You can make it of any width and shape you want. When I start working with fabric, I'll show you what to pay attention to. This is the pattern for facing, and this is the pattern for lining. This is the lengthwise grain, and this is the lengthwise grain as well. Do not forget that you need to add some for the seams to each edge. What is the most important is that you need to add one centimeter here both to the facing and lining. I write it down in the patterns. We need to do it in order for the jacket to be of the same width when I stitch these details. I need to add just one centimeter to the width, but I want to add two centimeters to the length. It's better to have an extra centimeter in the lining. Don't add too much though. One centimeter here and two centimeters here. Now I can start cutting the lining both for the front and for the back. The fabric I'm using for making lining is of a very high quality. This is silk. What is also very important is that it's pretty strong. I can cut the back without any changes. I'm going to cut the small pieces here and in the sleeves where I make facing. Anyway, I'll do it later. I'll show you everything. It's much easier to work with dolman sleeves than with regular ones. I'll pin the front pattern here to draw the seam allowance. 
И сейчас подмечаем при прибавки. One centimeter to all the sides by the bottom. По низу два сантиметра, помним. I'm not going to draw one centimeter seams. I want to add two centimeters here in order to have an extra centimeter for the length. The lining for the back is ready. The lining for the front is almost ready. Next, I'll cut facing. Don't add more than one centimeter to the width. Add just one extra centimeter to the length. When I finish cutting this detail, the lining will be ready. Do not forget to make notches on the waistline. It's very important to make them in lining. It should be accurate. Here it is. Do not forget to add one centimeter seam allowance to each side when cutting the facing. I remind you that it's even written here that I need to add one centimeter. The thing is that the facing and lining together should be even to the jacket itself. Notice that the direction of file matches in all the details. This is very important, be very accurate. The only details left to be cut are the facing for the sleeves and the back bottom. Have a look here. This is a whole piece facing for the bottom stand, bottom, collar, and collar stand. It's very convenient to work this way. The technique is very useful. I remind you that I'm cutting the interfacing material. This one is also pretty strong, but not as much as the second one. I decided to use this one because I want the collar stand to be of a beautiful shape. Have a look here. As I've already said, the facing and the lining together should be even to the original detail. The only thing which is different is the length of the lining. It's one centimeter longer. I remind you that I'll insert a biden in between the lining and the facing. I'll show you how to do it next time. The front and the back are ready. Next time we'll continue working with this jacket. That's all for today. Be different and beautiful. My name is Pauk Štirina. Subscribe to my channel, write comments, share videos, press the like and the bell buttons. I really need your support. Thank you. Goodbye.